that they use um, ARPA funds for this, TIF funds, which is what we requested. Viewing the grants is they also know they have the option since 38% of that road has been torn up for the laterals, they could actually use ARPA funds for the road. But the way our grant application is written, use the ARPA funds to put in the sanitary extension, use the TIF funds for the So it's, and again, that's really their decision, David, and, but they're aware the funds won't be required until 2023. So they have time to make a decision. Right. And I think your request, let's see if I understand it right, was to use ARPA funds also for the road and then freeing up TIF dollars to retire the TIF earlier. Yeah, no, the other way. Use ARPA funds, use county ARPA funds to pay for the sanitary sewer infrastructure. Then use the TIF dollars to pay for the road. And their TIF does say that they can do that. That was one of the things they had to check. So we've actually got... We're, we could get TIF dollars or we could get ARPA dollars for the road. Correct. You could get, right. Or you could get general fund. It's their, they've left that open the way the letter's written as to where <coughs> the funds come from. Uh, and as you're aware, there's a separate uh, grant application to cover the costs for the residents that are being forced to connect. So, you know, it's one thing for the new homes that'll be paid for with the sale of the home. But for those residents that are being forced to connect, we've requested that they cover that cost with ARPA dollars also. Okay. okay, well, I'm going to go back in the agenda now since I see that um, Dr. Watson is here. Um, Jeremy, if you come up to that table with the microphone there, mm -hmm. hopefully that microphone's on. Um, I think all the trustees here have met Dr. Watson previously. Either you know him as a township resident or you recall when he came in and spoke on behalf of the stormwater issue over on Pyle South Amherst. Um, but we do have an opening um, on our Board of Zoning Appeals because Rose Betcher has moved out of the township so she's no longer eligible to serve on that board. Gosh, I didn't look up how long Rose has served, but I know it's going to be in excess of 15 years. She's been on the board for some time, uh, but the way the statute's written, she has to step off. Um, so I've got a prepared resolution here that the to a, consider and appoint uh, Jeremy Watson as a second alternate to the Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm first going to make that motion just to bring it to the floor and since it's all prepared I'm not going to read through the details here. That'll be my motion. Thank you. So now I'm going to open it up if you guys have any questions for Jeremy. I have no questions for Jeremy. Thanks Denny. David. 
Are you related to a Dr. Watson in Amherst? Yes, so my father and grandfather were both chiropractic physicians. Uh, my grandfather started in the early 50s downtown Amherst and his office for most of his career was where the Ziggy's Kitchen, the carryout kitchen is now. And then uh, my father joined him in the mid 70s. Uh, he's now still in practice on Cooper Foster Road. So I'm third generation chiropractor. Father still practicing. Still practicing, yep, he's still full time. He's in good shape. Remember uh, oh, Larry Watson? Yep, Larry's my uncle. My, yep, my dad's brother. He would have graduated in uh, early, maybe 74. He's a twin. 76, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Gary, yeah, Gary and Larry were. What's that? Who was, your, who was your father? Ronald Watson. Yeah, he was a 69 Amherst graduate. Okay. And they're, they're residents of Amherst Township as well. They live on Tina Lane. About the only question I have. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. Well, and uh, with that, Jeremy, I'm just very appreciative of your willing to step up because I know you're very busy and it's uh, always difficult to get people to fill these positions, but our experience is once people are on, they enjoy being on and they don't want to leave. So okay. Typically, that's where we lose people. Either they move out of the township or, you know, some health issue comes up or something's happened where they can no longer serve, but it's not that they didn't want to serve. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, and I know Rose, I graduated with her daughter, Lori. Oh, well, there, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's, um, yeah, well, then you know that they are now going to be almost neighbors. Where Rose is moving down the street from her daughter. So, it's, um, so now she'll be Grandma Rose, I guess. Yep. All right, are there any other questions for Jeremy? No. Okay, then um, I've got uh, Chris. Can you do roll call? I have Lynch. Yes. Yuri. Yes. Abraham. Yes. Okay, now Jeremy, there is some official business we've got to do here, and as opposed to me reading this and you repeating it, there's an oath of office there in front of you. Okay. Before we do, what is the resolution number? It is 815. 815? 22. 22. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. All right, Jeremy, if you can just read through that oath, please. I, Jeremy Watson, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and will faithfully discharge the duties of the Board of Zoning Appeals of Amherst Township in Lorain County, State of Ohio, during my continuance in office. All right, well, welcome aboard. Thank you. And so now I'm going to ask, you have a pen there? Um, I didn't bring one. Oh, we'll get one. We're going to have you put your signature there. Do you have any questions of us? Not at this point. Yeah, I think uh, between our conversation and um, talking to Sam a little bit, that answered most of my questions. Most of it was just around the time commitment of it, but um, it sounded like um, that won't be an issue with okay. my schedule. Yeah. And you've already got uh, Bill Atrani, the chair of the Board of Zoning Appeal. You have his contact information. Yeah. I know he's discussed it with you. Yeah, he's went over a lot of it. Yep. Okay, what well, I'm going to ask is there's a small room over here. Mm -hmm. Georgianne's inside. Now, it's going to be tough for her because she's going to be running a camera in the meeting, but she's got some information for you, and if you hand her that oath, the trustees will end up signing that also as the witness, but I think she's probably got a, a zoning book to give you okay. to have with it, and I think she'll have all your contact information, and Chris will be working with you. If I could get an email address, I can send you yeah. some paperwork. And perfect. I'll just give you my card. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, if you just see George Ann inside. Okay, now with this, this causes some bouncing around in the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals, and let me get the right order here. So, uh, 
The next resolution is accepting the resignation of Rose Betcher and appointing Randy Herring as a successor to fill her uh, term as a full board member. So I'll make that motion. Second. Roll call, Chris. Yep. Put the number down. All right. Um, Lynch. Yes. Yuri. Yes. Abraham. Yes. And that's eight sixteen twenty two. Eight fifteen. Sixteen. Eight sixteen. Yes. And the final one on this is a resolution appointing Esther Arroyo as the first alternate of the Board of Zoning Appeals, and that'll be my motion. Thank you. Lynch. Lynch? Yes. Sorry, Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. That one's eight. Seventeen. Okay, as far as the LORCO report, I have nothing new to report at this time. I am going to move on to complaints, and this isn't on your agenda, but you do have a copy of a complaint that is dated August 6th from uh, Mary Jo and Pus Diftak. If I pronounced that correctly, they live over in Copper Creek. And they just had a letter they were concerned with the um, operational time at the Speedway. Uh, they indicate on the evening of August 6th that the races went on uh, past 1 o'clock in the morning, which is entirely possible. And they're just requesting that, uh, you know, perhaps these hours could be at least indicated, whether it's reasonable, would be like the um, 11 o'clock in the evening, 10, 11 o'clock. So just so you're aware is I know Linda's already started some search on the conditional use for that particular property um, because Sam has been out ill and Sam will continue that search. He will be back tomorrow uh, just to see what the existing conditional use states. As the trustees are aware, this operation has been going on for many years, but there's also been considerable changeover in the personnel that operate this. And um, you know, most township residents accept that the Speedway's been in operation for a long time, but going until 1 o'clock in the morning uh, might be a little difficult to handle. And I know that this past weekend they were past midnight again. So I don't know if this is becoming a regular thing or what the reason is, but uh, that research will be done to determine if it currently is written down. If not, there may be some adjustments to that conditional use uh, to get more specific. But just so you guys are aware of it, and I'm going to show that as being the responsibility of Sam in handling that. And getting back to those residents. And before we go on to the new business for all the other items under old business that different individuals have responsibility for. Is there anything to bring <coughs> forward? No, we don't have anything at this time. Nope. Okay. <coughs> all right. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to need, or Jan, can I interrupt you? Can you put up that diagram, please? Yeah, there were no issues for unfinished business or a new business, Chris. Thank you. We're going to be talking about the railroad quiet zone. There are um, three items here. Okay, you see the first one, and um, we had this present at the last meeting, but we only had two options, and then uh, David and Kevin discussed a third option here. This is the, the large property that is just north of the railroad tracks that uh, the front portion is outlined in yellow there. Uh, that's 48 acres that uh, Alexandria and Joe Mancuso have purchased. Uh, and they do intend on building a home on this property. 
Uh, they already received from the Board of Zoning Appeals a variance uh, to reduce the minimum required lot width of 125 feet to 75 feet uh, so that they could build a home back there. And there's still some flexibility in the home. When I've talked with Joe, uh, it appears it's going to be close to where the Genezac property home is as far as moving to the east. So if you look just north of the yellow line, you can see the Genezac home. Might be a little deeper. It all depends right now how far he can pull electrical lines back there is what he's planning. Um, Joe also in the conversation indicated that I believe he actually uh, runs an excavation business. So he'll have some time storing some of his equipment back there. And I know at the Board of Zoning Appeals, he discussed uh, farming and hunting on this property. But I explained to Joe that in forming this railroad quiet zone, uh, we can't have an access point directly coming off this property. And you'll see there's a current temporary access that the railroad is using to put in some new culverts uh, back there for the Batten House ditch that go under the railroad. And if you've been driving by, you've seen those large culverts and the heavy machinery they've been using. So we've got uh, three options here. Option A, which is the preferred option. There's nothing magical about the way that's drawn. Obviously, that can be adjusted there, but it would require um, an easement and recording of deeds for both properties so that at the ingress and egress point would be a shared driveway between the uh, Mancuso and Genezac family. Um, with that one, especially if he has heavy equipment on a trailer, gives him plenty of turn radius since he'd be approaching Oberlin Road at a 90 degree angle and outside the 100 foot uh, distance of the raised curves, delineators that the township will be installing so that people can't drive around the crossing gates when they're down uh, to beat the train. Uh, you'll see his their lot for the Mancuso says it's only 75 feet, but realize that 100 feet starting at the railroad gate. So it'll not come up to the end of their property, but it'll be darn close. It'll be actually just south of where the utility pole is on the northern edge of their property. Um, so option A is the option that the township prefers. Uh, Option B is a possibility, but the negatives there it would require a much longer drive for the Mancusos. It would also require clearing of considerably more trees to, so that they could get an easement to the township property. But that creates another problem. The township currently restricts that area uh, during the evenings because we know people will do late night dumping. Um, so if if that were the option that we had to go, the difficulty is it would be very difficult to close that off in any way because right now we got a nice choke point um, up there at the western portion of that property. The third option, option C, which would actually be our probably second preferred, is that within the easement the township could construct a stone base drive that would interconnect the um, Ancuso property with the access point for the Genezac property. And in the discussions, I'd indicate at the last meeting that I talked with the prosecutor, and the prosecutor says, yes, that is entirely possible. They understand what's going on here. The prosecutor agrees option A would be the preferred option, option C would be the secondary choice, and option B would be the last choice. But those are the three choices we have right now. I've left all this documentation and an explanation of what the township's doing uh, at the Genezac home. Uh, I'm not sure if they weren't home at the time or weren't answering the door, but I rang the doorbell and knocked and didn't get any response. So I left all the documentation with them in addition to my contact information so I could sit down and discuss this with them. Uh, or have them come to the township. And I did mention to Joe Mancuso that we'd be talking with him in the future, but 
I wanted to find out from the Knezaks as far as their feelings uh, before we have a sit down with everybody on this. Um, so with that as a quiet zone, I don't know if the trustees have any other discussion. I know, Denny, you're seeing this for the first time. Yes. Uh, David had seen this at the last meeting, but we just added in the option C, which came up at that meeting as another option. And the prosecutor did confirm, yes, we could do that. reason that's secondary is just a concern with the approach. If you think about it, if you're trailing, a tr have a piece of equipment on a trailer, you know, if you're making a, want to go south on Oberlin Road, you'll have a tight turn radius to get around the raised curve delineators that are there. Um, you know, if you're real careful, you can do it. Now, we can adjust that. Obviously, that drive doesn't have to stay all in the right-of-way. It could be on the Mancuso's property, but ultimately it would have to get in the right-of-way to interconnect with the Genezac property if that is the option that we're required to take. Okay. You know, I was just thinking of something. I look at this. Um, uh, what's that 100 feet? You need the delineators for 100 feet, correct? Right, from the crossing gate. From the crossing so gate, the gate back. Down. Do yes. we know what 100 feet from the crossing gate is? Yes. I'm just looking at Len's driveway. His driveway may be impacted too. No, his is not. Um, the crossing gate, David, you can kind of see it on this. Um, you actually, you'll see what they call the the house with the power interrupter. Is yeah, I see the little one. Okay, little the there. gate, if you just follow to the east, the gate is right there. You see a little shadow. That's where you begin measuring. So um, it's close where even with the Mancuso property, they might be able to get an uh, ingress and egress other than the utility pole that brings the power in is right there at his, um, at the northern portion of his property. North property. They have those guide wires coming down, so you'd have to probably relocate that pole for him to get access on his property. So you can almost get the point in of coming into his property without requiring any type of easement or putting anything in the road right away, but it is darn close. Now, you know, we didn't go out to survey this. This is just measuring it um, in terms of physical distance. When you walk out there, you'll see, might make it, but odds are he probably won't. But once he mentioned having this um, heavy equipment, you know, that makes a whole ball game because now you're talking about equipment on a trailer. You know, I did mention to Joe one of the other options was, but he wasn't happy with this, can only go north, so he'd never be able to turn left out of his driveway, and he didn't like that idea either. And, you know, I can understand that, but, you know, that is another option. You know, and that's the one we had that discussion with the consultant for the railroad quiet zone. His, he's saying make this clean, the best is that there's no exit at that point within that 100-foot light. Other questions? Okay. Yeah, Chris? What's the distance from the road to where this gentleman plans on building his house and storing his equipment? More than 500 feet back off the road? Uh, let's see. It looks scaled probably. You see where the Ganesak property is? Mm -hmm. He's looking at just south of that. It might even be a little bit more to the east. Um, he'd like to get as far back as he can, Okay. Um, but his limitation right now, he says, is where he pulls power from. And being back there, I assume he's probably going to, ha you know, he's obviously going to have an on-lot wastewater treatment. I assume there's a chance that at that distance, he's probably going to be propane or heating, and most likely he might even have his own well for water because, you know, bring any of those utilities back, that's big cost, but um, I you know, guess he's obviously in support of a quiet zone, it's just he wants to make sure he has access. Well, he has access, and as long, you know, police, fire, and EMS, I mean, for us to get a truck down that driveway, if those delineators are out there, that's another consideration, but if he has heavy equipment and he's going to be moving it in there, if he's going to drive in there or keep some of it on his property from time to time, he's going to have to have 
the same kind of a drive to get into that. Right. Well, that's those why delineators feel, that just that kills. Everything. That's why option A is our preferred mm -hmm. route. Um, you know, option C is the next. Now, option B. That's a possibility, but you see you're coming through the township property, then we can't restrict it anymore. And then not knowing exactly where his house is going to be, if it's up, if it's um, at the same setback as a Ganesak property, you can see it's even longer, and he'd have to take out quite a bit of trees and have a long drive on his property just to get out and get to the township property. Um, and yeah, as far as safety vehicles getting back would be the same thing, you know. It, no matter what, when his house is back there, nobody's going to see it. Right. You won't even know it's there. Um, you know, it's going to be far out, but it's, you know, again, when he came to the Board of Zoning Appeals, he want to go back as far as he can. You know, he, he's also got some other limitations. The Fat House Ditch runs through there, but it's even farther to the east. He's got 48 acres back there. You know, this is only showing the front western portion of his his parcel. It even wraps around the township. As as you widen this out, Mayor Georgian's showing it. You can see if she runs around the perimeter of his 48 acres, which is all wooded back there. Oh, so that's that's what he's working with. But again, what he was looking at is where the power comes in. So, and there's a utility pole up at the, um, right there near Oakland Road on the northern corner of his property, and that runs back for the Ganesak's power. There's another pole back by the Ganesak's, and that's where he's thinking he can pull power from, and potentially he may be further back. He was planning on putting a barn up to buffer the noise between the railroad and his home. I really don't think that'll provide much of a buffer. I mean, it's similar to what the township put an added space and insulated here on the township, which is storage behind us, the same thing, because we literally, in the past, we would stop our meeting, you know, till the horn stopped. And, you know, it doesn't buffer us much from the horn, but it buffers us from the noise of the railroad, it's, you know, the train itself running down. But... Obviously, the quiet zone would benefit him. It's just a matter of how to, the best way to get ingress and egress in there. So option A is what we prefer, and, you know, that will be no problem with the safety features getting in because you're the same thing as getting to service the Ganesak property. Right. It's just a matter of which home do you go to, you know, when it branches off. Okay. So I'll keep the board informed, but that's um, right now I need to hear from the Ganesaks, and unfortunately I don't have a phone number for them. Um, so I did stop over there, and I've left them with the documentation on this to explain it. Um, but in time we'll probably have to have them all, all parties together, because if there are uh, deed restrictions written up, you know, it, it wouldn't really be right to have the property owners paying for that, so that is going to be an added cost to the township, and that's not included in the cost estimates for the um, ARPA grant application, because we don't know which direction this is going, just as if we end up putting a drive in the road right away to interconnect those two, that's going to have some added cost to it also. Um, won't be a huge amount, but it's still an added cost. Okay, so then I've got, um, there is a resolution here. This is formally authorizing the Lorain County ARPA grant application um, with a 50% uh, reimbursement request for the railroad quiet zone. Um, so if you look at this, uh, this here has six different entities participating in this quiet zone. So starting from the west, you will have Brownhelm Township, then the city of Amherst, then Amherst Township, uh, then the city of Elyria, Lorraine County Engineer, and you keep moving to the east, you then get Elyria Township, um, and the city of Elyria, and again the city of Elyria. So you've got six different entities involved in this particular project. Uh, we're looking at the total cost 
to all entities uh, to put in these supplemental safety uh, measures so that people cannot drive around the crossing gates as they do today. Uh, so that'd be $100,000. We're requesting 50%, so roughly $50,000 uh, to help fund this. And then if you look at this grant, what's numbered as page four of 18, is the, the explanation was to distribute if we're awarded funding, and there's no guarantee on this, well then how do you distribute that funding among six different entities? So what we did is at each crossing, looking at what uh, type and length of supplemental safety measure would be required, uh, and we assume that all of them would be the same with this raised curb, uh, quick curb product that's on the uh, ODOT cooperative purchasing uh, program. And with that, with the number of crossings and length of curbing you'd need, you'd see that it would be 8.5% Brownhelm Township, 21.2% City of Amherst, 263 to Amherst Township, 8.5% to the County Engineer, 27.1% to City of Elyria, and 8.5% to Elyria Township. Um, so that's the way the splits are looking. Now realize each community might determine that they want to use a different supplemental safety device. I know the city of Elyria is looking at one. Um, it's not as robust, but it might be a lower cost. The uh, city of Amherst is considering possibly putting in some concrete, narrow concrete medians in the middle of the road and just put delineators on the concrete. Uh, that might actually have cost a little bit more at the beginning. But we had to determine how do we fairly do this and also meet the deadline that these grants are due at the end of this month. Yeah, so today's the 23rd, and so I had told all parties that any changes they want in the verbiage or the context to get to me uh, by today because I'd like to submit this tomorrow. Uh, I already know the city of Elyria is looking at, there's some quite a few challenges at an Abbey Road crossing, which in this grant, we're not showing the Abbey Road crossing in there, but now Elyria believes they might be able to include that crossing, which would extend this. We're showing this right now as a 9.7 mile length of a quiet zone. Well, if they can include the Abbey Road crossing, that'll add another 0.44 miles to this, and we would now have a quiet zone all through Lorain County because Vermillion's already put one in, North Ridgeville's put one in, and there's only a few crossings that are not, but it'll almost give you a quiet zone from here through to the airport, uh, Cleveland Hopkins Airport. Um, so it'd make it easier for the engineer of the train. They, don't, they basically wouldn't be blowing their horn unless they see somebody on the tracks, animals on the tracks. I mean, there's occasions they still always have the option to use their horn when they see a safety issue. Um, but regardless of what each community finally decides to get this simple in turning in this grant, because been a, with all the different entities, there's been a lot of complexity here, we had to choose one. And so right now the uh, quick curb, which is on ODOT's cooperative purchasing, very robust, looks to us that with the raised area, not only does it uh, prevent people from driving over it, is it gives us a nice lineup, if you will, for our snow plows where they don't hit them. Um, and you should be going slow when you cross that railroad anyway. So it's, it'll definitely light that area up in the evening so people are very much aware where they have to go and that there's a railroad crossing coming through. Um, so essentially, if we just looked at the township's portion, if there's uh, no grant money, our total cost would be about $26,000. You know, with grant money, it'd be about half of that. And that's also assuming that we do this with internal resources. If we bid this out, you're probably looking at another 30% on top of that. Um, and that's something, once we get going, similar to what was just done on Fowl Road with Elyria Township, you know, the different communities, the adjoining communities may want to work together uh, to get the project done so that the road closure time is held to minimum. 
that you're working in the middle of the road, you either got to have flaggers, which is added personnel, or you've got to close the road off. And um, it's one way or the other here for safety. But anyway, I did want to formalize this motion, so I'm going to make a motion to authorize the Rain County Opera grant application to pay for 50% of the costs incurred to create a quiet zone on the Norfolk Southern Railroad. Second. I don't know if there's any other questions on this. It's, I know it's a lot, but I know all entities have been very cooperative in this. Okay, if nothing, Chris, roll call. Lynch? Yes. Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. And that's 818? That is 818. Okay, the next item, this also deals with the ARPA, or I'm sorry, with the quiet zone. Uh, I've been in contact with ODOT, um, specific, specifically uh, Todd Van Kirk, who is the co-op purchasing coordinator, and I'm sure this is probably changeover in people and time, but he had no record of Amherst Township being a uh, participant in ODOT's cooperative purchasing program. So his recommendation was pass a resolution. Uh, they pretty much give you the verbiage for that and then to send the certified resolution to him. He has a email at contract.purchasing at dot.ohio.gov and I've got that copied in here as we pass this. This would then give us the opportunity to partner on there where they've already competitively uh, bid uh, this quick curb product. And I can tell you, looking at the cost of products, the uh, price right now, they've got a, a real good price, which is only good through December of this year, I think December 21st. So I was hoping Kevin would be here tonight to discuss this with him, but I'll talk with him separately. Um, once we know what's happening here and the other communities are all on board, knowing the difficulty with availability of materials now is we're probably going to want to get our portion on order quickly. Um, we would be talking on this uh, at, in the neighborhood of eight skids that are four by four skids anywhere from depending upon because they've got between the delineators and the reflectors and the curbs themselves is anywhere from three to five foot in height. So we'd have to have storage for eight skids of that size also. Um, but I'm going to make the motion authorizing participation ODOT cooperative purchasing program. Second. Now this is for everything. Too. Yeah, it's, it's everything I know that. It's like our equipment, things right. like that. That's what I thought. Right. Yeah, but well, that's ODOT though. Isn't some of that under this the state office? Yeah, there's two of them. We've got the, the Department of Administrative Services. Yeah. We definitely have. Administrative Services. We have the SALT agreement with ODOT. What we didn't have was a that he could not find is a. Um, resolution for all the other materials that they purchase. So he said the best thing is just go ahead and pass another one. Uh, realize if, if you read through this, David, their program even says that the community can determine that it's an ongoing resolution. Otherwise, it's good for two years. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this is ongoing, but how do we you know, that's up to them if they've got it in their system. So I'm just going based on what Todd said, go ahead and pass this resolution, send it to them by email. Um, so Chris, when this is done, we will send us, we'll want to send a certified copy sure. and I'll show you. It's, I've got, the, got it copied in here for the email address. Then when we're ready to place the order for the materials is, he said, send another copy of your resolution and uh, the contract number that we'll be buying from in the product. Then ODOT will notify the supplier that yes, we're eligible for that material to purchase it at the ODOT bid price. 
Okay. And you, you have the email where this will go? If you look under the attached sheet that says cooperative purchasing, follow it down to that uh, paragraph that re reads, please send co-op requests via email okay. to. So that's where the resolution That's goes. where the resolution okay. goes, correct. Okay. Okay. All right, is there any other discussion? Lynch? Yes. Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. That's 819. Yes, sir. Okay, the the next item as far as the, um, the county uh, board of commissioners is talking about a TIF on the uh, sandstone development. The trustees met with the uh, Rob Duncan, the director of Lorraine County Community Development, and uh, Don Romancak of County Community Development, and the director of their stormwater district, and then Josh Bender, uh, one of our economic development specialists in regards to a document sent over by the Lorain County Board of Commissioners on this TIF. Just preliminary discussion. I show a resolution here as far as the township objecting to that. Um, since the statute gives us 45 days to decide what we're going to do with this once we receive notification from the Board of Commissioners. Uh, but at this time there's Still some questions and uh, as far as the information that's there, the county I don't think was aware of all the details in the township settlement agreement with the developer and as a result of the meeting we had earlier with the county representatives, they realized we're going to have to have a joint meeting between the county, Amherst Exempted Village Schools and the township. So there is no resolution or action required right now, but I we'll have something prepared for the trustees at the next meeting um, which will be on September 13th because we do have 45 days that we must take some action on this in regards to that uh, tax incremental financing notice from the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners. But that's all the business I needed to cover. There will be a need for an executive session. So I'm just going to open it up. Is there any other business to come before the board? I have nothing at this time. Okay, well then our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday, September 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, don't know if there's probably prior to that there may be a special meeting uh, again in regards to this TIF and I'll just have to notify you of that once we find out. Um, I don't know if the between the county and the schools if they're going to want this an official meeting or if it's just going to have to be a representative from the board that gets together with those groups. But with that, I'm going to make a motion that we enter into executive session for 121.22G. Um, this is dealing with pending or imminent court action. And then three. Also with um, division, I had division eight. Um, this is negotiations with other political subdivisions requesting, uh, respecting requests for economic development assistance. Second. <clears throat> Yes. Abraham. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to make a motion that we return from executive session to the regular meeting at 8:42 p.m. I'll second that. Lynch. Yes. Abraham. Yes. Yuri. Yes. Okay. Is there any other business? No, sir. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Yuri. Yes. Abraham. Yes. Lynch. Yes.